All right, so let's talk about properties of water, these weird things that water does. Um, fascinating, and you'll also see that that's why scientists are looking for water on other planets, because if you see that there's water on other planets, there's a great possibility there could be life there. So, but then again, on other planets, they could have something that's not water, but something else, and they look at us, and they're looking for something on us, and they don't have, you know, we don't have so no life on Earth. So, um, we just, you know, it's, it's, a, it's another galaxy or whatever. So anyway, uh, so let's talk about water, okay? So life depends on water in many different ways. Um, it's the biological medium on Earth. The main reason the Earth is habitable, right? Fish and plants and all these different things, they need water. Most required substance in all organisms. Um, most cells are surrounded by water. And the intracellular fluid in most organisms is about 70 to 95 percent. In us, it's about like it's about like 80 percent. So we're mostly water. Okay. Oh, here, 60 percent of the human body is water. Okay. Now, um, just a quick review about the hydrogen bonds. Right. We've been talking about that. It's between the oxygen from one molecule and a hydrogen from another molecule. They're intermolecular, okay? They're very weak bonds, which means that we can break them up pretty easy, okay? They, in fact, they, they always break up. They break up and then they refuse with other ones, and it goes in milliseconds. That they're, like what I was drawing, it, those hydrogen bonds will break, but then that hydrogen, that, that hydrogen is going to bond with another oxygen of another molecule. That'll break, and do it. so it's always doing it all the time. Okay? So they're weak bonds, they're always continuously breaking and reforming, all right? Um, especially in liquid form. In solid form, like in ice cubes, it's not going to break that much or fast, okay? So we have, it creates this higher level of structural order. It keeps changing. All right. So again, this is where uh, you, know, you have your oxygen a molecule over here and the two hydrogens. Again, it's a polar molecule, meaning that the hydrogens are going to pull positively to one side, whereas oxygen, which is, has a, a, since it's a bigger molecule, it's going to pull even more uh, negatively on that side. So it um, makes it a polar molecule, not equal on both sides. Again, just to reiterate, the covalent bond is between the hydrogen and the oxygen of one water molecule. But the hydrogen bond is going to be intermolecular bond between one molecule and another molecule of water by way of a hydrogen of one molecule and the oxygen of another. Not hydrogen to hydrogen, hydrogen to an oxygen. All right, so again, um, just showing the same thing, these positive and negative um, partial polarities that's happening in the water molecules. All right. And that's more of a three-dimensional thing. Okay. Putting that many pictures is showing the same thing, you know there's a lot of emphasis on that. So if you think about it, 
Why is it unlikely that two neighboring water molecules would be arranged like this? What's weird about that? Sorry? The number of bonds. No, not the bonds. Well, not the number of bonds. Yeah, this here you won't see. See, there's tri this is hydrogen. These are the covalent bonds. Covalent bonds. So that's one molecule of water. That's the other molecule of water. But what they're trying to show you is you won't see these two hydrogens and two different molecules interact. It's trying. I'm trying to emphasize that the hydrogen of this will have a hydrogen bond to this oxygen. So it's again just emphasizing it's hydrogen to oxygen that happens there. Negative is positive. Okay. <coughs> so let's talk about one of the uh, first ones. And we're going to do a lab, I guess, tomorrow, and it's going to um, illustrate all these kinds of uh, weird functions that, uh, or uh, properties that water has. And one of them is this cohesion and adhesion. And I know you know all this. You've seen it in so many different examples in the world, but you didn't have a name to it. And you didn't think about it. Like why? You know, like you saw the ice float in water. You see it all the time, but now you're thinking about it scientifically. It doesn't make any sense. Isn't that dense? It should sink. So we're going to explain things now. So cohesion and adhesion. Cohesion is collectively the hydrogen bonds hold water molecules, molecules together. That's what it is. It's one molecule of water binding to another. That's cohesion. That's the hydrogen bond is doing that. It helps transport water against gravity in plants. It's kind of like if you're trying to grab that person at the, uh, if you're on a cliff and there's someone falling off the cliff. You're grabbing onto his hand, and then you see someone else that's going to fall, and you grab him on that hand, and then you start falling, and someone starts grab. This is kind of you can see this lattice that it's actually making to prevent the gravity from going, you know, for you to go falling down. You're trying to keep it back up, so it kind of fights gravity, okay? Um, and that's how we can explain that if the water is in the soil. How does it get into the leaves of a 20-story tree? It somehow goes up against gravity. Adhesion is going to do this, the bonds, these hydrogen bonds, in between the, uh, the water molecules. So then what's adhesion? There's a difference between the two. Adhesion is the attraction between water, which is a polar molecule, and something else that's also polar. So not another water molecule, something else. So it's kind of like the water going into the veins of the tree, but now they're actually attaching the water molecules to the tree itself, through the, the little vein, the walls of the vein going up. Does that make sense? So you have cohesion between water molecules, and you've got adhesion going from water molecule to something else. Okay, does that make sense? The difference between the two. As long as that something else is polar. So this little, this little joke over here, if this is going, if this is water trying to go up here, you've got the cohesion, this is a water molecule, water molecule, that's happening in between the water molecules, the hydrogen bonds. But then as long as this wall, or whatever structure that is, is polar also, because polar things attract to each other, positive and negatives, then that's going to be attracted this way, and that'll be adhesion. It's the combination of these two that's going to help what we call the capillary action. It's going to go up, or fight against gravity. Okay? And that's what happens, this is what we call uh, capillary action. Why there's water in the soil, how does it get up there? There's another experiment that you might have done with science fairs or something like that. They don't do it here. Um, a carnation, right? A carnation plant or a carnation flower. If you get a white one, a white carnation, 
and you put it in water, but then you put dye in the water, right? You put like red dye in the, in the water. You could actually, after a couple days, the flower itself is going to appear red or pink to show you that it, it took the water from below and brought all the way up through the stem into the, the, the uh, petals of the carnation. And it appears pink up there with water. All right, it's the same concept here. Okay. Now, let's talk about surface tension, another property of water. Okay? A measure of how hard it is to break the surface of the liquid. There's like this, I'm going to use this word loosely, membrane or film that's on top of the water. And we're going to do this also in lab, where we're going to put like a paper clip or something on top. You put it up very gently, it sits on top of the water. You see this, leaves, they float on it, they go on the water, and they stay on top. Or certain bubbles. That's the surface tension. Well, what is it? What's making that surface tension happen? Why can't I walk on water? Right? What's making it different over there? So we have this liquid air, right? The liquid and the air itself uh, interfaces, the connection, the attraction between the two. And the surface tension results from a greater attraction of water molecules, cohesion, than to air molecules, which is adhesion. Because in the air, it's, it's polar. You've got all different things in there. There's sodium, there's, there's, there's a bunch of things in the air. So that's polar. It's got some charge to it. So you're... So you have, again, when we're dealing with cohesion and adhesion, you have a cohesion of the water molecules themselves, attracting to each other, breaking, reforming, breaking, reforming. And then you have this adhesion, which is between the water and the polar air. And it's creating this fight with each other and creating this film, the surface tension. All right? So water has a stronger surface tension than most other liquids. You put alcohol, you can put your finger right through it. Or you can't put a, a, a paper clip on top. It'll just fall. It doesn't have the same surface tension. Those water molecules have this fantastic hydrogen bond property that other things don't. That's what's happening over here. So it has an extremely high attraction or cohesion with one another and causing that to happen. All right? So water tends to pull in its surface due to this web-like hydrogen bonding that's happening below it, all right? And it explains why there's a curvature of the surface of it, that um, when, when you put a drop of water, it, it, it creates that curve, right? That little curve that happens, it's not flat. You can see that curve, because they're all pulling from each other in it. You'll be amazed if you put, I think they, no, I don't think we're doing it over here. Um, I've got so many different ideas we could do with water properties. You take an eyedropper and uh, see how many drops it takes to put it on a penny. And you'll be quite amazed at how much a penny holds. It's because of that, that surface tension. It creates that going around there. So, um, so it's trying to show you over here. You've got the water molecules with the cohesion with each one of the water molecules. And then because it's so tight, it's creating this surface tension up there. It's like pulling itself in and creating that tension. And you have, and when it does it, the way that it works, it's, it's it rather, things tend to want to go into a ball, pulling itself together, a bubble, right? When you blow a bubble, they don't turn into squares, right? They turn into bubbles. Spherical things are what it wants to do. It naturally wants to go in a spherical uh, position, and then a square position or a triangle, because of the way that it's being pulled with each other. And because you have polarity in the air, with the cohesion that's happening here, it creates this surface tension in between. And that explains why, you know, we have these, what are these called, water striders, they can walk on water and stuff. You can even have this lizard, this double-crested uh, bacillus could actually walk on here. They actually call this, I think they call this the Jesus lizard, because it walks on water. So, um, but it walks very fast. You know, you have to do that very fast to do that. 